Good morning, church. Good morning. Welcome to Blanco Methodist Church this morning. Thank you for braving the cold, or at least what we know is cold down here in South Texas. Appreciate it. Yeah, it is cold. I actually had to put on warm clothes, and the only time I'll probably wear them all year. But thank you for joining us nonetheless. Please rise as you're able. The peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Our call to worship this morning is great as the Lord. <laughs> Great is the Lord, he is holy and just, by his power we trust in his love. Great is the Lord, he is faithful and true, by his mercy he proves he is love. 
Great is the Lord and worthy of glory. Great is the Lord and worthy of praise. Great is the Lord. Now lift up your voice. Now lift up your voice. Great is the Lord. Great is the Lord. Great is the Lord. He is holy and just. By His power we trust in His love. Great is the Lord, He is faithful and true, by His mercy He proves He is love. Great are the Lord, and worthy of glory, great is the Lord, and worthy of praise. Great is the Lord, now lift up your voice, now lift up your voice, great. it is to be able to come into your house this morning. We can gather here as believers in you. We know that our salvation is intact because we believe in your son. Lord, let us know what it is that you would have us do. Let us seek your will. Let us have the courage to live it out fully. In the name of Christ, we ask all these things. Amen. Amen. Continue our worship this morning with Guide Me, O Great Jehovah. Guide me, O thou great Jehovah, pilgrim through this barren land. I am weak, but thou art mighty. Hold me with thy powerful hand. Bread of heaven, bread of heaven, feed me now and evermore. Feed me now and ever. The crystal fountain whence the healing stream doth flow. Let the fiery cloudy pillar lead me all my journey through. Strong deliverer, strong deliverer, be thou still my strength and shield. Be thou still my strength and shield. When I tread the verge of Jordan, bid my anxious fear subside. Death of death and hell's destruction, land me safe on Canaan's side. Songs of praises, songs of praises, I will ever give to thee. I will ever give to thee. Amen. If you would please remain standing in honor of our first scripture this morning. It is from the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 3, verses 1 to 10. Here she comes. Good morning. I'm Barbara Rollig, and as always, it's a pleasure for me to read scripture for you today. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord before Eli, and word from the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were infrequent. It happened at that time as Eli was lying down in his place. Now his eyesight had begun to grow dim, and he could not see well, and the lamp of God had not yet gone out. And Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. And the Lord called Samuel, and he said, Here I am. Then he ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call. Lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called yet again, Samuel. So Samuel arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he answered, I did not call my son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, nor had the word of the Lord yet been revealed to him. 
So the Lord called Samuel again for the third time. And he arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli discerned that the Lord was calling the boy. And Eli said to Samuel, Speak, go lie, excuse me. And Eli said to Samuel, I'm sorry, I've lost my place. I beg your pardon, where am I? Okay, and he went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli discerned that the Lord was calling the boy. And Eli said to Samuel, Go lie down, and it shall be, if he calls you, that you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Then the Lord came and stood and called as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, speak, for your servant is listening. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. You may be seated. A few announcements we do have this morning. Uh, the office will be closed tomorrow in observance of Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Uh, so you have church business. You'll need to find another time for that. Uh, as we mentioned, our um, sign-ups, if you want to have... Okay, correct. Was that a prayer request? I think maybe it was. <laughs> Windows, Windows needs help, apparently. So please uh, put those on those concern cards, and we will have those for our prayer time later on this afternoon. This, it will be this afternoon, I promise. It won't go that long. But it will be later on today. Is there anything else we need to announce before? Yes, Troy, come on up. Good morning, church family. I hope you guys are staying warm. Just a couple of announcements. Uh, Mondays uh, and Wednesdays have reconvened now that we're out of the holidays. And uh, just a, a real shout out to Chris and Kathy Miller. They have uh, come and uh, instead of us ordering pizza on Wednesdays, they've uh, made some really amazing meals. If anybody would like to participate in that, uh, just give me a holler on a Monday or a Tuesday. And uh, we would love for the church to participate in, in being present. They've really had, uh, the kids have really enjoyed uh, having that time. So just remember to invite folks to Monday nights. We meet right after school till about 7.30 and Wednesdays 4 to 6. If anybody that would like to help with our uh, elementary uh, theater, the, the costumes came in. Uh, I think we've got all the assets to, to do a dry run this next week and uh, hopefully for uh, a recital in the month of February. But we are needing some seamstress and just extra little costume uh, adornments and, and things like that. So we would hope to see you there from 4 to 6. Thank you. Thank you, Troy. Right. Wonderful work you're doing there. Anything else we need to announce for the church this morning? So the question has been asked, why is there an emphasis on the imminent return of Christ? And kind of the context of that is, what should I do about it? I'm already a believer in Christ. If he's going to come back tomorrow, is there something different I should be doing? So I've been pondering on this a bunch, and the studies we're doing with Missler and Romans has actually jumped into the answer to this. Uh, it has a lot to do, what you think about all this, with your, your personal eschatology which is a really fancy way of saying a study of the end times. Uh, there are several different views, and all those views basically diverge based on how literally the leadership and the pastors of this church and what's being preached may not jive exactly with how you see things happening. But being a literal interpreter of that, when you see something happening with Israel, it tells you things are happening. Prophecies are being fulfilled. So pay attention, the end might be near. So that's the imminence part of that question. But the what should I do about it is really involved with the sequence of events that are going to happen and when the judgments will occur. The rapture is kind of the first judgment. It's that pass-fail, do you believe in Jesus thing. If you get raptured out of here, you passed. If you didn't, you still got a chance, but it's going to get tough. But then the church gets judged, and they get judged by their works. So that tells us that our salvation is from faith, but our inheritance, our reward, is through our works, making those very important. And we see this emphasized several times in Scripture. We see 
when Peter is resolved to Christ after denying him three times. Jesus comes to him and says, Peter, do you love me? And Pastor jumps into the depth of the, the Greek there and the different types of love, and that adds some flavor to the story. But Peter answers, well, of course I love you, Jesus. And Jesus says, okay, you love me, that's enough. No, that's not what he said. He said, feed my sheep. Do some works for me. So it gets really important. So there's also the parable where the master has gone away and left the slaves to tend the property. And then the master returns. And he judges the diligent slaves versus the lazy slaves. Now what that tells us is the slaves already belong to the master. They already believe in Christ. That's the parallel there. But the ones that did works were praised, and those that didn't were judged. So we should be doing something. So if you see an imminent return of Christ coming, the question you've got to ask yourself is, are you doing what Christ wants you to, or do you have your feet up on the desk with the salvation box checked? Because Christ wants more for you. That was the whole thing with Peter. Yeah, Peter, you love me, but I want more for you. I want to reward you more, so do this for me. Likewise with us. Jesus wants to reward you greatly during his millennial reign. And that comes through the works we do. So think about that. Study on it. Write me a paper on your personal eschatological view, and we'll pass that up. And, and Pastor, if we can go to prayer time, and you can fix any of these theological messes I've just stirred up. Good morning, church. Good morning. I am so glad to be in the house of the Lord uh, with you today. And just because I, I nodded when he said, I think you're right in line with me, uh, just on the dispensationalism, uh, I just you just don't know what people mean by that, and there's a whole gamut of beliefs on that. So, so uh, I'm, I'm, I'm still working on the difference between dispensationalism and dissipation. So uh, that's, that's where I'm at. Uh, but anyhow... Uh, I think it's exciting uh, to be here in this, this day and age. And uh, just to summarize everything that uh, Aaron said if theologically, uh, if Jesus were to go to your house after church, how many of y'all would leave early and go clean something up? I'm just going to ask. That's what we need to do right now. Okay? Uh, so that's, that's just simply put. Amen. He's coming. He's coming. And I hope you know that he's going to keep his promises. So, now as far as our, our prayer requests, let's let's uh, uh, please keep in mind to write them down on our cards. Rick's going to take over at that part of our service. We're going to have a time where we're going to invite you over. Uh, it's going to just be time of ministry, and we invite you to be part of that ministry time. And so we're going to save our request for that time. But I would like to pray uh, one particular one right now, just all by itself. Uh, all right, my uh, first, I want to thank. Uh, the family, Kathy Owen, uh, passed away, and we had our funeral yesterday. And these leftover flowers are from that service, and they're sharing them with us today. So let us thank uh, God for the life of Kathy Owen and pray for the family. Let's do that together. Lord, in your mercy. Uh, but yesterday, uh, there was a tragic accident uh, on 281, uh, uh, just south of town, and the son of Gary Cousins, uh, his oldest son, Evan, passed away in that wreck. So uh, right now, uh, we just, my heart is heavy. Uh, we have faith, but that hurts. And, and uh, I just, my heart is with Angela, his mother, and, and Gary, and just the grief of that family. So uh, First Baptist, I just like, before we even start our prayer time, I just want to pause and pray for First Baptist, pray for the Cousins family, pray in particular right now for Gary and Angela and uh, their children. So would you bow your heads with me? And let's just, this is just going to be a special prayer, okay? Lord Jesus, we come before you. Oh. Praying for a divine touch. Right now, we lift up Angela Cousins to you and Gary. We 
We pray, Lord God, for this family, for their children. And we pray that your spirit would be present and you would strengthen them. Lord, have mercy and be a strength during their time of grief. Be with First Baptist today as they gather together to worship. And as some of the church family discovers all of a sudden what had happened, impart your grace. We pray this now in Jesus' most holy name. Okay, church, I'm sorry to start off with the heaviness, but uh, it's, it's been a real busy week, <laughs> and a lot of stuff has been going on, and uh, that was just at the forefront of my mind and my heart. Uh, we believe that God is a God who hears our prayers, our, a God who makes a difference in our lives and gives us hope, even during these times of trial and tribulation. Uh, let's prepare our hearts to come before our God during this time of prayer as we sing our prayer hymn. It's number 454. And we apologize. I don't know if the words are going to be up there, but if, I don't know why cold weather does something to the computers. So uh, we don't know if the right words are going to be up there, but sing the ones that are right. Open my eyes that I may see glimpses of truth thou hast for me. Place in my hands the wonderful key that shall unclasp and set me free. Silently now I wait for thee, ready my God, thy will to see. Open my eyes, illumine me, Spirit divine. Open my ears that I may hear voices of truth thou sendest clear. And while the wave notes fall on my ear, Everything false will disappear. Silently now I wait for thee. Ready, my God, thy will to see. Open my eyes, illumine me. Spirit divine. Would you bow your heads with me and let us be an attitude of prayer. Almighty God, King of the universe, the one who is faithful and true. Oh, Lord God, we turn our hearts, our minds to you. Our eyes are looking up to you. You are our help. You are our hope. You are our salvation. And Lord God, as we gaze upon the cross before us, we're reminded it's through the death of Jesus on the cross that we have that hope, that life has been given, and death has been vanquished. The sting of death has been removed, and now we have a promise, a hope that is eternal. And we pray, Lord Jesus, that you would help us to have the ears to hear and the eyes to see you, especially in the midst of trials and tribulations, especially when we're hurting. We pray, Lord Jesus, that your presence would be so real that the warmth of your touch would be something that we experience and know and realize that you are faithful and true. So, Lord God, as we come into your house to worship you, we pray, Lord Jesus, your spirit would move in our midst. We pray that there be a fresh, fresh blowing of the spirit of the living God upon this congregation. We pray a fresh blowing of the spirit of God upon First Baptist Church. We pray over all the churches in our community that, Lord God, your presence would be felt, your word would be preached, the hope of Jesus would be offered and proclaimed, and people would hear and receive a blessing that we cannot live without. Lord Jesus, we open our hearts to you, and we pray for your glory to be manifest in your church. And for the faith we profess, 
to be something that is so living and so active and so real that even those around us would be drawn to the warmth of the fire that's burning within us. Oh, Lord God, rekindle the fire and the flames of worship in your church. Rekindle that faith that gives us the strength to endure. So we pray once again, come Holy Spirit. Fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in us the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit and we shall be created and you shall renew the face of the earth. May your church be part of that agency of renewal in this world. Because Lord God, we're coming to realize that the further we have strayed from you, the more grim our circumstances and the more evident our need is of a God who sustains us. We now turn towards every need and concern, and Lord God, the intercessions of your people, we pray, Lord God, for your grace and mercy with each of these. We pray for healing for those who are sick and those who are struggling. We pray, Lord God, for encouragement. We pray for those who are dealing with fears, addictions, those feeling, dealing with depression. We pray, Lord God, for those who are hurting right now. We pray, Jesus, that somehow your Holy Spirit and the mystery of your way would be our strength. Enable us to breathe, and may every breath that we breathe be a reminder that it's the Spirit of God who sustains us. And we pray, Lord Jesus, especially for those right now, as there seems to be with the allergens and the change of weather, we pray, Lord God, for those who are struggling with the seasonal consequences of the change of weather and for those who are not feeling well. We pray for your healing touch. And we thank you that you're faithful. We now lift up to you every need and concern from our troops, our first responders, and their families to the nations and for your will and purpose to be done. And of course, we pray, Lord God, for what is happening in Israel right now and for the need of peace and protection and provision. So, Lord God, we lay all these needs and concerns before your holy throne. We ask that you would hear us as we pray over these. Even as we now join our voices together to pray that prayer that you taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. He has done great things. He has done great things. He has done great things. Bless his holy time this morning. If the ushers would please come forward. Thank y'all. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we ask that you would teach us to depend on you totally. That we understand that everything comes from you. Nothing is of our own planning. Nothing is of our own devices. Lord, let us seek your will and put ours aside so that you are in the forefront of our mind always. And even when we give back, we don't even know what we're really doing. We're just giving totally to you. Bless us so. It's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Thank you. 
God from whom all creatures flow, praise Him all creatures here below, praise Him above ye heavenly hosts, praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, remain standing for our second scripture this morning from the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verses 43 through 51. The next day he purposed to go into Galilee, and he found Philip. And Jesus said to him, follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, of the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him, of whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nathanael said to him, Can any good thing come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming to him and said of him, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael said to him, How do you know me? Jesus answered and said to him, 
Before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Nathaniel answered him. Yesterday I went to H-E-B, if you'll give that to Rick. There you go. I went to H-E-B, and I, I ran into someone at H-E-B. Every time I go to H-E-B, they're there. I'm starting to wonder if they live there. And, uh, but one thing they said is, that choir, that choir at the church is so good. And what she said was, how does Sebastian do it? He just moves his arms like this, and the choir listens. And I thought, that's pretty cool. So when you go to H-E-B and someone's there to brag on your choir, that's pretty awesome. Amen? Amen. So choir, thank you. <laughs> Would you bow your heads to me and let's be an attitude of prayer. Oh, Lord Jesus, speak to us a word that we need to hear. May we grow in our faith. May we grow in our love for you. Oh, Lord, we need a real faith that makes a difference, a real faith that offers hope. We need to experience the living God. Oh, Holy Spirit, speak into us the word that we need to hear. Oh, still our souls. Open our ears as we open them. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, I told you, this is, uh, this is actually an old sermon that I, I've had to kind of dust off because this has been such a busy week. We had a uh, funeral after funeral and... and uh, uh, not yesterday's funeral, but the funeral the day before that I did was for someone I didn't know. And we, it was a really neat experience to go and visit with the family and get to meet them. And, and uh, his name is uh, Chuck uh, uh, Damaro. Uh, and um, uh, one thing that the family shared was how they were really encouraged uh, just about life after death. And how there was an incident that happened where he had mentioned earlier on something about he'd send a penny just to let you know that he's thinking about you. And they said that the day after our visit, right before the funeral, that they were finding pennies everywhere. And one of them was a weird thing that they had made the bed. And, uh, you know, when they turned around and turned back, there was a penny laying on top of the freshly made bed. And they said, where did that come from? You know, and I just kind of, they said, Pastor, can that sort of stuff happen? And I thought, I believe it can. I mean, that was one of the ways that my family, with my dad and his passing and my sisters and my mom, they said, you know, God's going to, or, God's going to, or however it works, there's going to be a penny to remind you and look at the timing and all the locations of all that. And it's one of those things, do y'all really believe that? I mean, can that sort of stuff happen is God a God who will encourage us or I don't know the dynamics of all those things but do we believe that stuff like that happens now I've told you about the story that after after the passing of my dad and and how how I could not be there on the one-year anniversary this is an old story old sermon sorry um, but just pretend like you're hearing it for the first time okay and after the passing of my dad, it was the one-year anniversary. I had to be in San Antonio, but I couldn't be with my mom because I was at a walk to Emmaus, and I was the spiritual director. And so it was one of those times where I called her, and I said, Mom, I can't be there. I'm sorry. I can't be there. I've got to be here. And my mom said, well, don't worry about it. God told me that they're having a one-year birthday party in heaven. And I said, oh, that's nice, Mom. And she goes, you don't believe in me. I, I know I just told you this recently. But she said, you're not believing me. I said, no, I believe that stuff, Mom. I believe that stuff. No, you're not believing that Jesus told me that. And I said, Mom, I believe, I believe. And yet, I was thinking she just needed that encouragement. And I hung up the phone after I visited with her for a while. And then I walked into my room where I was staying, and someone had put what we call agape. They had put a little reminder, just a trinket of God's love praying for right now is Angela get here just the voice of Jesus just saying I love you you know we have to deal with our hurt we have to deal with real problems in this life what I want is a real faith and a real God that makes a difference a God who speaks to me do you hear the voice of God can you feel his presence his touch I mean my mom is sitting there saying Jesus told me something very specific do we believe that when our parents, when someone bears witness 
to you when you, it's amazing how much faith you find at a nursing home of people who've had experiences with Jesus and they've talked like they're talking to him right now. I want that. Do you want that? You know, I, I told you, that, again, old story, but I t- about one year at the end of the year, this was the last Sunday in, this, in December of that year, and earlier that year I was at some kind of service, and I was moved by the Holy Spirit, the speaker, stepping up in faith, and I said, Lord, I'm going to tithe, uh, triple tithe, 30%. I'm going to tithe instead of 10%. And, uh, you know, it's a real bold thing to say, but it's early in the year. I went through the entire year tithing 20%. But I did not do that 30%. And so it was the last Sunday, and I was getting the service ready and stuff, and all of a sudden, God brought to my mind that you made that pledge, 30%. And I thought, Lord, were you really listening to that? I mean, was I just, was I just talking and just being showing my fervor and stuff? Or, or did you take it literally? What are you, what are, tell me, are you... If you want me to tie that 30%, would you tell me? Because I'll do it if you tell me. I left my office. I mean, this is happening like in a 30 minutes time period. I left my office and went in to turn on the lights into the gym, and there was a dime right there on the floor. And I saw that dime. I went, dime? That makes me think of a tithe. But that's just one. I did not touch that dime, and I left. Then I went over to the other building, and I turned on the lights for the nursery. And in the nursery, there's another dime. I went, ha, that's only two. (laughs) But I'm thinking, are you trying to say something to me? And I go over. I didn't even touch that dime. I wasn't going to touch it. And then I went over and got in my office, finished up my sermons. The ladies came in. They were getting coffee ready into the, in the gym. And I saw them. So I went over to give a hug to the ladies and thank them for coming in. And Oh, that's one lady. She was an alcoholic. And she was, I loved her. Uh, but she was like one of those who speaks like five times louder than you need to in public. She was pastor. I said, yes. <laughs> she was, I found something that belongs to you. <laughs> I said, Oh, really? She goes, yeah, I found it, and God said to give it to you because it's yours. <laughs> I said, what are you talking about? She goes, here it is. And she reached into her pocket, <laughs> and she held out her hand and dropped a dime into my hand. And I said, oh, that don't count because I know where you got it. You got it. I found. I saw that dime. I didn't touch it. I went over to the, to the closet, and I looked on the floor, and that dime was still there. I went real quick over to that nursery. And that dime was still there. And I said, God, are you trying to tell me something? (laughs) Church, you know what? I wrote a check for another 10% of my income. And that wasn't a hard thing to do after that third dime. Because I want to hear the voice of God. Now, I don't want to give you the illusion that I tie 30% all the time. That was a one-time thing, and I'm learning about watch what you say. Because God might hold you accountable to what you say. What I want to know is what's going to happen when the church all get active in hearing the voice of God speaking into us. I want to hear God's voice. I, my prayer is something's going to happen and something's going to be transcend in American Christianity where we come to church and we expect to hear the voice of God rather than a sermon. I'm getting tired of people expecting a homily. Oh, just give me a homily. Keep it short and say a poem and let us know when we're time to wake up. The, we need to hear the word of the living God spoken into us so we know that our God is with us. God made a promise and he kept his promise. God is speaking into us right now. If we look at the scripture, isn't the scripture filled with Abraham spoke to God? God spoke to him. Moses spoke to God. God spoke to him. David spoke to God. God spoke to him. Elijah, Mary, Joseph, Zechariah. 
the Apostle Paul, Ananias. And then there's a guy that we're going to talk about today, Samuel. His name, really, it, it, when you go into the Hebrew, and let me just tell you something, church. We are missing something if you do not become a student of the Word. You will get out of Scripture what you put into it. If you're not reading it in English, first of all, you're missing something. But if you're not a student of the Word, his name isn't Samuel, it's Shemuel. Shemuel, first of all, it, it can be translated in two different ways. You, the Shem, the Shem means my name or his name is El, is God, or it could be Shema, which means here. It, it's amazing. Before he was born, or when he was born, not before, but when he was born, he was called Shemuel. Before they ever would know that he would be one who listens to the voice of God and speaks on behalf of God. And yet his name encapsulates that. And I wonder if, if they named him that because God heard the mother's crying that I want a son. And she was blessed with that son. I really believe that God has got things happening in our lives that he's purposed. And he's doing because he wants to speak into us and he wants to capture us and get us to realize even before you were born, he's had a plan and he's moving. And he's arranging things in your life. And so you have Shemuel, one who speaks to God. And it's, it's amazing because even as Samuel hears, I'm going to say Samuel. We know it's Shemuel, okay? But <clears throat> for the sake of our uh, uh, tradition and understanding, Samuel, Samuel hears the voice of God when it says the voice of God was rare in those days. And he heard the voice, and it's interesting because he says, Speak, Lord, for your servant is Shama, which is the verb, listening. He even speaks the first part of his name. Now, church, I want us to look back at that. Let's look at that verse in, in uh, 1 uh, Samuel uh, 3. It says, Then Jehovah came and stood and called as at other times. Shemuel, Shemuel, and Shemuel said, speak for your servant is listening, Shama. And Jehovah said to Shemuel, behold, I'm about to go and do a thing in Israel at which both ears of everyone who hears it will tingle. Man, that must be a frightful word that God spoke here. And then he says, I'm going to tell you something that the ears of everybody who hears it's going to tingle. Now, let me tell you something. It was a fearful word, and he was afraid to tell Eli what God said. But Eli made him. He says, you tell me every word, whether it's good or bad. And after he heard the judgment of God on him and his family, he said, that is good. That is, that is God's word. Wow. Wow. My question is, do we really want to hear from God? Well, he wants to speak into us. I'm convinced that we have practiced hard hearing in American Christianity. You know why? Because if you don't like what the preacher says, you just go find another preacher. Either get a new one in for the church or you just go to another church. And you just, and then let me tell you something. You do not have to agree what I say with my theological perspective, errands, uh, you know, like I said, I, I, I question dispensationalism. I tend to be a dispensationalist, but it just depends what you mean by that. Because I have family members who are ultra dispensationalists. I'm not one of those. And so, you know, but what I want you to know is let's talk about what the scripture says. And teach me what God is saying to you. Help me understand because I need help. But let's make sure that we are grounded on scripture. And so the question is, do you really want to hear what God has for you? Listen, I, have, I pray, I ask God to speak into me. I'm in a season right now where I am hearing things and I, the study in the Hebrew is blowing me away. God, it's almost like God's, you know, one of those, I'm making this up right here in the spur of the moment. Um, 
Remember those dot things and you c go connect the dots there's to the numbers and, stand, and all of a sudden you start seeing something? That's how it is with the Hebrew. <laughs> you go, oh, look at this. Oh, look at this. I mean, even the significance of it being Shemuel rather than Samuel opened my eyes. Because when it's a shh in the front, it makes sense in Hebrew of what's going on in the text. And I sit there and I go, oh, that's awesome. And then you start studying it out and you start looking at the word means and where that word's used. And all of a sudden, God is speaking into me and I'm going, oh, man, God, this is so good. I don't even need a sweater. It's so warm in here. I just, church, I just want us, I want you to fall in love with the Lord and revel in his love for you and realize he's given us a gift. And his Holy Spirit's going to speak to you through his word. The question is, do you really want to hear it? Do we want to hear what God wants to say to us? He says, the ears of those who can hear it, they're going to tangle. It's really interesting because Eli, he heard the word. It was judgment on him and his house, and he said it was good. But I've actually, I've actually gone to someone before and said, listen, I believe God's given me a word that he wants me to speak into your life. The question is, do you want to hear it? And if you do, would you come by and let me share it with you? They never came by. Now, listen, if someone told me that, said, I think God's got a word, I would want to go, and I'd be ready to refute and argue, and I'd be tense and everything, but I want to hear what you think that, you think that God is saying. Man, church, do we really want to hear the word of God? Do we have an expectation to hear God speak into us? Someone asked me just a week ago, would you seek God for me on this? And I prayed and I prayed and I prayed. And I won't get into the details. And I, what I do is I don't miss my devotion practice. I have certain things I do, passages I read. And when I'm seeking God, I don't let time keep me from hitting every one of those ports of entry. And I pray over them and I say, God, what was interesting was I read it and I felt like God was showing me something until that night. And in the middle of the night, God put it together and gave me a word based on that. And I believe and I spoke that into that person. How oh, it was so awesome as we harmonize that that is God speaking. I just want to hear God speak. Okay, let's go on. Uh, God speaks into his creation. Uh, that, just, that's, that is part of creation. That's part of God's interaction with us in the world. Um, God created everything by his spoken word. Then God said, let there be light, and there was what? Light. Okay, now what's interesting is you got to keep this in mind. See, see bad teaching, uh, watered-down preaching, and, uh, and cults have messed us up. I want to make sure that you understand, according to the scripture, who Jesus is. It says, in the beginning, God created everything. He spoke it, and it came into being. Listen to what it says in John 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God, and all things came into being through him, and apart from him, nothing came into being that has come into being. Now, listen, you might have a whole point. You know, it says in Romans 1.20, it says, For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature <laughs> have been clearly seen. You hear that? His God's invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen. That should just cause us to go, what? Being understood from what he has, made, has been made so that people are without excuse. The very creation itself shows the glory of God. God is speaking now. In fact, I love that it says in Psalm 19, it says, The heavens are telling of the glory of God, and their expanse is declaring the work of his hands. Day to day pours forth speech, and night to night reveals knowledge. Church, creation is crying out. 
Now, I want you to get, before anybody falls asleep, because the point I'm going to make in just a second, he's counting on his creation to bear witness, but now he's got new creation. Are we bearing a witness? Are we crying out? I mean, they told Jesus, tell them to stop saying that you're the king. And he goes, if they stop, then the stones themselves will start to sing. He's counting on something for it to go beyond the old creation, the physical world that he created to his new creation to get excited. I mean, you look at this world we live in. Is it a design or is it an accident? There's just no way it could be chance. And God wants the creation to say so. And your salvation is not by chance. And God wants you to say so. This is exactly what God is speaking. You know, sometimes I marvel. Just God in his creation. I mean, just the fact a bumblebee could fly. I mean, you just look at the creative order. You see the messages of God's glory in all of creation. And we won't get into any kind of uh, lesson on that, which you could go to Moody Science. They will show you all you ever need to see in video form. But I remember seeing the beauty of a sunset one time. And I'm like, God, this is like a masterpiece. It's a painting. <laughs> And all of a sudden, this cloud formed and it looked like a signature. It really did. It just looked like a signature. And I went, that's a signature. And just as I saw that it was a signature, I drove and, and there was a mountain that got in the way of that cloud. Man, I floored it. I must have been doing 130 miles an hour trying to get to the other side to see what the signature said. Wouldn't that be pretty cool? I mean, what would it be, you know? Solve the whole age-old uh, argument. Is Jehovah, uh, Yahweh, what, it, what is it, you know? And I got to the other side, and that signature dissipated. I went, oh. <laughs> now, I just really believe that when I was talking to God, I said, this is just beautiful. It's like your masterpiece, that that's, it was just like God saying, yes, it is, and it's for you. But you don't need to know what the name wrote out said. Church, God speaks through his creation, and he uses his creation. When Glenn James died, and I did, went back to do his funeral, and, and, uh, and I talked about butterflies. I don't know why I did that during the service about being the life and how caterpillars don't realize the freedom of the butterfly, whatever, and I did all that. I, I haven't done it again, but I did it at his service, and that was, I read it in some reader's preacher journal or something. And then at the graveside, Ray is given just a liturgical, you know, reading at, at the graveside, and what he's reading, and I, come on, us preachers could say sometimes it's boring, you know, and and he's reading, and all of a sudden this butterfly, a big butterfly, lands on his leg. Right here. And it's sitting there doing this butterfly thing. It's a big one. I mean, it's about that big around. On it. He doesn't know it. And it's doing that. And the whole family is fixated on the butterfly. They're, like, they're not even listening to what he says. It could have been in Latin. They didn't know. I've actually had someone compliment me on a sermon, and I didn't preach that Sunday. <laughs> maybe, maybe they were alert. I have no idea. But eventually, a butterfly flew off his leg. Guess where it flew? It flew into the open grave. The whole family watched that butterfly fly from his leg, and look to the, now they're looking at the grave. So when Gray did his closing and blessing and said, thank you for coming, the whole family stood up and walked over to the grave. And this is what they're saying. You see it? I don't see it. Where did it go? Did it get out? I didn't see it get out. Where it? And what are y'all talking about? They said, it it's never came out. And then they looked at me and they said, how did you do that? And I said, well, I tithe a lot. No, I just. <laughs> do you believe God is speaking? Church, do you have the faith of a child? Do we have an expectation? See, God speaks to us. But I tell you what, you will never hear the voice of God clearly unless you tie it down to the scripture. This word, God speaks to his inspired word. 
And before we try to hear God any other way, we've got to be grounded in his word. It says all scripture is inspired by God. Now, listen, that's why I just praise God. I, I always talk about Frank because Frank's one of the gifts he's brought is Bible pathways. And he wants to get everybody in this church reading their Bible. And he says, I'll sit through it with you. We need more of those Bible Pathways groups. Open up your house. Come to the church. We have a nice little uh, prayer room over here. Do a Bible Pathways with somebody. We need to get in God's word. If it is holy and inspired, then we need to study it. Amen? amen. Frank, I didn't hear you say amen. <laughs> amen, Frank? Oh, thank you. Listen to what it says about the word. Hebrews 4, 12 through 13. This is why we, you and I have got to be granted in the word because sometimes we start thinking and seeing God in creation. And if it's not tied to the scripture, you can get off, okay? Because sometimes what you're really feeling is you ate too much pizza rather than the Holy Spirit, okay? It says, for the word of God is living and active and sharper than any two-edged sword and piercing as far as the division of soul and spirit of both joints and marrow, and able to judge the thoughts and the attentions of the heart. And there is no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are open and laid bare to the eyes of him with whom we have to do. God wants to use his word to speak into us, and that's how we are going to learn what God is calling us to do, his word. And Jesus held the leaders of the church accountable to that. He said, have you not heard? Have you not read? You need to spend time in the word. And so I want to make sure it's clear. You might be sitting there and you might be thinking, Pastor, are you saying I need to study the Word of God on a regular basis? Yes, I'm saying that. <laughs> make it clear. If you are not a student of the Word, you are messed up. Get off the milk. We're not here with a Christian nursery. We want you to be students of the Word. Okay, now, if I've offended anybody, uh, talk to PPRC. God wants us to hear his voice. Listen, God is speaking. In John 12, the Father speaks to Jesus, and everybody hears thunder. But what did Jesus hear? He heard the voice of God. God wants to speak into us. The Apostle Paul runs into Jesus, and Jesus speaks to him in a loud voice. But everybody around him, all they heard was thunder. But Paul heard, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Who art thou, Lord, that I'm persecuting? I'm Jesus. Oh, that was more than just thunder. It was the voice of God. Church, there are people that know about God, who love God, who might only hear thunder when God is speaking clearly. I am so convinced, I am so convinced that in every church, God is speaking, every service, God is speaking through a hymn, through the scripture reading, through the hopefully the preaching of the word. And there are those who hear God speaking clearly, and there are those who hear monotony and religious rituals. Oh, I want to hear God. The question is of desire. Uh, Jesus said, let him who has the ears to hear, let him hear. It's like you have a choice. You know, there's a, a, a word in Scripture, it's called rhema. The word rhema is where the word becomes alive. It's where you're reading the Scripture, <coughs> and God reaches through the pages of Scripture, grabs you by the tie, and says, I'm speaking to you here. This is speaking to you right now. I want you to do it. It's a rhema word from God. Fresh and alive. You know the sad part? Eli. Eli is the priest of God. He knew God. He preached about God. He served Jehovah. And yet because of compromise, because he refused to do what God already spoke into him. He refused to obey God. Because he put his sons who were evil above the fear of God. God spoke judgment through Samuel into his life. And yet, Eli, why didn't he not hear God speak? Because he did, and he did not listen. He compromised. You know, there was a place in, in Daniel chapter 5 where the Babylonian king, Belshazzar, that is taking the holy things of God and, and worshiping 
the God of gold, silver, and bronze. And, and he's taken the golden vessels from the temple, and he's drinking wine and, and celebrating to have a party with the holy things of God. And all of a sudden, a human hand came out of nowhere, and the finger of God touched the wall and began to write on the wall, Mene, Mene, Peku, Uparasans, which was a judgment on him. And they laughed at it. And that night, he lost the kingdom, and that prophecy was fulfilled. Church, do you really want to wait until you hear that kind of word? I don't want to wait. I don't want to hear that kind of word. I don't want to have to have the finger of God come into my life when God already speaks to you. God told Eli, your sons are wicked. You need to hold them accountable. And look what they are doing to the people of God and how they are using the ministry. They're keeping the Ark of the Covenant, and they do not fear me, and they did not know God. Wow. Can we hear the voice of God? And will we respond to what he says? It's interesting because the finger of God touched the earth one other time that I can think of in particular. It's in John chapter 8 where that woman was caught in adultery, and she was brought and said, what should we do? Shall we stone her? And Jesus began to touch the ground, and he, with his finger, he's the creator, remember, and his finger touched the earth and began to write something on or scribble on the ground. And then he stood up and he said, let those who have no sin, let them be the first to cast a stone. Ooh. All of a sudden, he bent down and he starts writing, the finger of God touching the earth, and the wisest and oldest started to leave until the youngest they realized God was doing something that they needed to get out. My question is this. When the holy thing happened where the finger of God touched this earth, why did they not bow down and say, have your way with me? And that's what I want to do. Lord God, have your way with me. It's a question of dedication. Samuel was dedicated. He lived in the temple. He slept by the altar. Did you know your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? You've been bought with a price, and you have the Holy Spirit within you as your witness. The question is, will you hear the voice of God speaking into you, and will you respond? Will you start that dialogue, that conversation with him? It says in Isaiah 59, it says, The Lord's hand is not so short that it cannot save, neither is ear so dull that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have made a separation between you and your God, and your sins have hidden his face from you so that you do not hear. So he does not hear. You know, when it comes right down to it, if, if you're not obeying God, if you're not lining up, that's what Eli did. Eli, Eli was in the presence of God. He ministered to God. He was a priest of God. He knew about God. And he actually could hear his voice, but he refused to obey. And his disobedience created a block. You know, one reason we can't hear the voice of God is because you're not doing the very first thing he's had to do to begin with. You need to keep your vows. You need to do what God tells you to do and, and honor him and do it immediately. God convicted me the other day about doing something I didn't want to do, and he spoke to me again, and I jumped up immediately, got on the phone and made a commitment, said, okay, um, count on me. Be listening. Samuel said, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. I'm listening. I want to hear God. No. Oh, do we really want to hear God speaking to us? Determination. I think one of the barriers there is the question of we have to decide who's the judge. Who's the one that we're going to trust? Whose wisdom? Are you going to trust your own wisdom, your own judgment? Or is it going to be the word of God? I think it's interesting that when Samuel heard God speak, it says the word of God was rare in those days. It's interesting that the last thing that's said in the last chapter of Judges, chapter 21, verse 25, right before Samuel came in and heard God, it says, And in those days there was no king in Israel, and everyone did what was right in his own eyes. If you and I will settle for just doing what we think is right, rather than seeking God and saying, God, what is right? What do you think is right? What do you want me to do? 
Because quite frankly, it's not about you being right. It's about you being righteous. And righteousness is submitted to the Almighty God. And so the invitation is there. Jeremiah 33, 3, Call unto me, and I will answer you, and I will tell you great and mighty things which you do not know. Do we believe that that scripture is meant to be fulfilled today? Because ultimately, like Aaron said, when it comes to eschatology of the last things, do you take the Bible literally? Do we really believe that God speaks and he wants to speak into your life? Will we consecrate ourselves and be all in with him? So I close with this summary. God speaks through his creation and we are his new creation and God wants to speak through us. We overcome Satan by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony and not loving our lives even unto death. My question is this, how are you doing on your testimony? What's a testimony? It's declaring what God has done personally in your life. That's your testimony. Are you speaking the glory of God? When God speaks into your life, God told Samuel, you go and declare. Are you sharing with those around you? Philip went and found his brother Nathaniel. He said, Nathaniel, we have found the Messiah. He is here. The one prophesied about, he comes from Nazareth. And Nathaniel goes, Nazareth? Nazareth? Are you kidding? You know what I've discovered? I discovered this. See, God was already working on Nathaniel before he met him. So that when Jesus spoke and he said, Ah, there is an Israelite in whom there is no guile. He goes, How do you know me? And Jesus said, I saw you under the tree. And Nathaniel goes, Oh, my God, you are the Messiah. And he goes, What? Jesus, I said, I saw you under the tree. Why do you see what I'm going to do next? Let me tell you something. God's already been speaking to you, and he might be talking to you about what I have just said today. And every time I preach, I realize I'm not preaching to open canvases that have not been touched because God is at work in you, and I am simply adding on to what God is speaking already into your life. And you need to go and tell somebody what God has done. You need to go share because people are going to get excited as they realize that God is working in them and he's going to draw them in. And that's how the church is going to grow when you and I have a testimony and next week you're going to get a sermon that I've never preached before because Rick's going to preach it. <laughs> About going and being disciples, fishers of men. Church, you and I need to have a testimony and if you're not sharing it, shame on you. We need to be a church that boldly declares the glory of God and look at what our God has done. Because he's counting on you to be his ambassadors, his agents. It's just amazing to me when people say, how did you know that? How did you know to call? I called a guy just out of the blue. I hadn't talked to him for years. And God put him on my heart. And I called him. He goes, how did you know? My wife just told me she's leaving me. And I needed to talk to someone, and you called. How did you know to call? I said, <laughs> here I am, man. Here I am. Church, we need to hear God. We need to reach out. We need to move. He's counting on you. Would you bow your heads and let's pray. Lord God, speak into your church. Speak to us, Lord. We want to hear a fresh word. We want to hear the living word. We want to see that our God is the living God. And you have a purpose and a call for each of us. Oh, God, may we hunger and thirst for your word. May we hunger and thirst and be totally surrendered to you. This is our prayer. So come, Holy Spirit, do that work in us, we pray. In Jesus' holy name, amen. I'm going to ask Rick if he'll come and share our prayer concerns. And he's going to place the prayer cards on the prayer rail. And this is an invitation time uh, for you to come and receive uh, prayer and to be part of our prayer ministry. It's just going to be short, but we don't want to cut this out. Uh, so as he reads them and he places them there, there's going to be an invitation for you to come and pray over these. We need someone who will come and pray 
in particular for Angela and Gary and those kids. Okay, uh, I just, I just, my heart is broken uh, for them uh, right now. And uh, so we need to be lifting up all of these needs. And if you need prayer, uh, after Rick shares these prayer concerns, uh, he'll be up here. He's got anointing oil. I'll be up here. Uh, if you need prayer, we'll be go- open up your hands and we'll come to you and meet you and pray for you. This is our time with Almighty God. Rick. I have Kat and Wyatt sick. All cancer survivors and their caregivers. Uh, Camden Andrews specifically. Ron Herbert, who's battling cancer in both eyes and may lose one or both very soon. Loris Perkins. Request for God's help in all circumstances. And request for Elizabeth Pavlov for healing. And from Chris, Chris recovering from COVID. Won't you come as, and, and spend some time here at the rail in prayer? People of God said, amen. Amen. Today we're going to close with our commitment hymn. And that commitment hymn is Here I Am, Lord. And we're going to sing the first and third verses of that. And as we sing that, that's an invitation. An invitation to say, I want to hear God. And then an invitation to say, God, I will go. And I'm going to be your agency in this world to make a difference in someone's life. And so today we're going to give you that invitation. If if as you sing it in, in, in a chorus where it goes to here I am and you want to raise your hand, it doesn't make you a charismatic. It simply means someone who's saying, I want to be the one you call on. Here I am. Send me. And so if you've never made a commitment to Jesus, if you uh, need to rededicate your life to Christ, if you simply want to make this your, your church home or you simply need more prayer, you come forward as we sing this. But let's all make our commitment whether we come forward or not. Here I am, Lord. Send me. Would you please stand? I, the Lord of sea and sky, I have heard my people cry. All who dwell in dark and sin, my hand will save I who made the stars of night 
I will make the darkness bright. Who will bear my light to them? Whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the night. I will go, Lord, if you lead me. I will hold your people in my heart. I, the Lord of wind and flame, I will tend the poor and lame. I will set a feast for them. My hand will see. Finest bread I will provide Till their hearts be satisfied I will give my life to them Whom shall I sin? Here I am, Lord Is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the night. I will go, Lord, if you lead me. I will hold your people in my heart. How great is our God, sing with me, how great is our God, and all will see how great, how great is our God. Name above all names, he's the name above all names, worthy of all praise. And my heart will sing, how great is our God. One more time. How great is our God. Sing with me, how great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. He is so great. Our God is so good. Church, thank you for worshiping with us this morning. Stay warm out there. God bless you. Have a good week.